Welcome back. Shriram Finance is the stock which is on our radar among the top Nifty gainers today as uh, the company has approved the sale of its housing finance subsidiary for about uh, a valuation of 46.30 crores uh, to private equity major Warburg Pincus. Umesh Levankar, who is the executive vice chair of the company, now joins in to discuss this further. Thanks a lot, uh, Mr. Levankar, for joining in. Congratulations to the deal finally concluding. I remember the multiple conversations that we have about this and you said, yes, it is in the offing. At some point, maybe it will happen and happen it has. Um, you know, the only thing that I wanted to know is that, uh, is it a little lower than what you were earlier expecting? Because I'm looking at, uh, you know, your earlier comments itself, basis, the valuation assumptions that you gave, it would come anywhere around 6, 6,500 crores. The offers which were there, which were close to around 5,000, 5,500 crores. So what gave for you to actually Go ahead and sell it at a valuation multiple lower than peers and lower than what the street was anticipating. Yeah, good morning. Uh, we never gave out any number. We did not had any ballpark target numbers. Whatever we felt that what was the uh, best rate uh, that is uh, uh, what well, offer that we got, we should be able to uh, conclude the deal. And also, we were looking at a good. Uh, 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 what call partner who can you know, take it forward. Uh, that's also very important when we make the deal because the management has to be comfortable uh, in continuing the business. Uh, we have built a very efficient leadership and management in the SHFL and we are proud of it. And we feel that this deal and the Warburg is a good name uh, uh, to reckon with and also they have done in the past a certain uh, transaction uh, uh, of uh, uh, total uh, investment and making it uh, bigger and better. And we are quite comfortable and happy with the deal. All right. Hi, Mr. Ravankar. Uh, good morning and good to see you in. This is Nigel on this side. I recall two months ago, I was trying to push you for a date and you said, Nigel, in first quarter of FY25, it will be done. So good on you. You kept your word on that. Maybe, in fact, the street was factoring in a little higher number, but you have given us rational on that front. Uh, tell us, how does this change things? What does it take your capital adequacy ratio to? Uh, the capital adequacy of SFL uh, will uh, improve by nearing to 100 basis point. Uh, that is one thing. And that will help us to grow our business uh, uh, faster for the next uh, year or so. And, uh, we, I, I, and also, no, we can focus on our business, which is the core. Our core business is lending to businesses, uh, lending for uh, buying of commercial vehicle uh, and uh, SMA businesses. And we will focus on that. Uh, the housing needs a certain, uh, what to call, uh, more specialization and it needs uh, more attention and it also needs uh, a lot of uh, capital because it is the fastest growing uh, uh, segment and also a uh, company. And we felt that it is uh, better to uh, know, um, focus on our core business and uh, improve the capital education of the SFL. Right. Uh, fair point there. But, you know, just uh, for bookkeeping, if you could tell us, what is the net amount that will come to the company, X of all the taxes, etc., fees, whatever needs to be paid? So what's the deal done at and what's the net amount that comes to you? Uh, the, the total proceeds that come into the company is uh, for, because we have 84%, uh, uh, 3908. Uh, the PNL impact is uh, 1360 crores after tax. So you get 1360 crores after taxes, etc. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, let's talk about business then. You know, you get some capital, uh, the bandwidth of the company as well is now focused on the core business, not on the housing part of the business. What is the growth you're looking at? And give us some understanding, uh, Mr. Ravankar. Some part of, uh, you know, the markets believe there is pain in rural in the rural market. Have you experienced anything on that front? Uh, see, this year we do expect a little slow in the first quarter because of election. But it is a temporary and we feel that the moment the new government comes in, all the... Uh, the government projects and infra projects will uh, start functioning uh, or st start getting implemented. As far as rural is concerned, we are really witnessing a good, uh, a good credit growth in the rural, and the demand is good. And the even the uh, asset quality has improved significantly in the rural area. So we are very quite. Happy.
happy and comfortable in the rural growth. The demand for tractors, two-wheelers have grown significantly, and most of the two-wheeler demand is coming uh, in the uh, rural belt, especially the agrarian economy, uh, UP, Bihar, uh, MP, and the interior Maharashtra. Uh, so we feel that rural is doing well, and with a good monsoon predicted, this year also it should do well. All right. You know, uh, the, to the previous answer that you gave with regards to reallocating some of the proceeds of this into higher growth opportunities, that's something that brokerages echo as well. This transaction should enable SHFL to reallocate the capital to its higher ROA vehicle finance and consumer finance businesses itself. You've given us the number, 1360 crores, the net that comes into your books. If you could give us a sense of how much would be allocated towards, uh, you know, commercial vehicle business? How much of it would be allocated towards consumer finance business? At what rate will you leverage your book with the kind of uh, capital that you're adding? If you look at the uh, our segmental growth, uh, commercial vehicle is growing at around 15%. The passenger vehicle is growing fastest because the demand for passenger vehicle in the tier 2, 3 towns are the highest and it's growing more than 25%. So passenger vehicle will definitely grow faster this year also because more uh, income, disposable income is with uh, uh, in that segment, the tier two or three towns. And then the SME business, SME business itself is uh, uh, you know, having good traction and demand is quite good. And we are quite bullish on SME business getting expanded into smaller towns and we have reach because now post-merger, we have 3,000 plus branches, we have a reach, and we should be able to do well. Then additionally, we also would like to focus on uh, gold business, which we feel that our reach will help us to increase our uh, um, market expansion there. So you you haven't given us the split. Uh, how much of this 1360 crores goes into uh, one and no, the other? A, uh, the... Uh, Money is fungible. It depends upon the. We, we disburse more than 10,000 crores every month. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> if we cannot really allocate uh, pie yeah. to pie each of the mm -hmm. segments. Any other measures that you want to uh, undertake to focus on the core business? You have any other non core assets, so called non core assets that you would like to sell? Uh, right now, we don't uh, have any plans because this is one subsidiary we had. Uh, all other businesses are in single company. So we would be focusing on uh, the little high yielding business to have a better margins in our uh, in, in our business. And generally speaking, uh, we would prefer to do a small ticket uh, lending to small entrepreneurs, not the large ticket to uh, mid and large uh, entrepreneur businesses. That's our core strength. Our core strength is to reach be of uh, help and uh, be of a friend to the businesses. Right. What would be those high yielding businesses and also um, gold business? Would you at some point look at unlocking value there? Because the street is suddenly seeing a lot of potential in gold lending. See, with the gold price going up, uh, the gold lending uh, of people coming for gold loan have increased because they would like to unlock the value of the uh, investment they have made in the gold. That is banned. It is also available at a cheaper rate compared to any other uh, source of uh, borrowing. If you go and borrow hand loans, you need to pay very high interest rates, uh, especially in the uh, uh, what you call the informal segment. And this is very handy for anyone to raise money at much reasonable rate. And for us, it is high yielding, but if you go by the market, uh, especially the pawnbroker segment and all, it, it just coming into a formal segment or NBFC, will definitely uh, get a better uh, better deal. And if we have increased our reach. See, earlier, uh, gold was offered in around 1,000 branches. Today, we are able to add another uh, 600 branches. So around 1,600 branches are able to now give a gold loan. So that, that kind of reach. And we have 3,000 branches. We can add more as we uh, you know, progress. So th this kind of reach is giving us uh, uh, you know, good traction. And we should be able to uh, take advantages of our reach and the branch network and the people. We have 75,000 people on uh, uh, employed in our company. So that kind of reach we have, 
So small ticket, we can do well with uh, good understanding of the people and also mm. by providing them a service uh, of higher standard. All right, final question before we let you go, Mr. Ivankar. Uh, now that, uh, you know, an important uh, imponderable for the company has gone past you, you're getting some money, you're looking to grow. Also, there is uh, the election-related uncertainty amidst all of this. What is the kind of disbursement target that you have for this year? No, this year we have given target, uh, we have guided the uh, market with 15% uh, AUM growth on the top line. But our focus will be to improve the bottom line this year. We are uh, trying to get more digital play and uh, we are also trying to improve our uh, uh, operational efficiency. And uh, you can definitely expect a uh, better bottom line growth uh, than the top line growth. So that's what we are targeting this year. The reason why I ask you this question is that, Mr. Ivankar, the, the time you gave us this guidance of 15%, uh, I'm, I'm not sure whether you included this additional capital coming in uh, on account of this sale in that guidance. And now that you have some more capital coming in, would the disbursement guidance not improve by a couple of uh, percentage points? See, uh, the, uh, the 360 gross net coming in is a, a, a small uh, sum. I, as, I was, uh, as I was telling you, it's 10,000 crores. It's a right. disbursal every month we have. So uh, it is not be really uh, making a big difference. Okay. Thanks a lot, Mr. Ivankar, for joining in and giving us, uh, uh, you know, the lowdown on this deal that has happened. 1360 crores is the next net that comes into you after uh, selling your stake in the housing finance business for a value of almost 46, 30 crores for the entire business. And that is something that uh, you will deploy into your high growth businesses. Wish you good luck. 15% disbursement growth with a better bottom line growth is what you're guiding for FI25.